Kia ora everyone. Um, uh, it's my great honour to um, welcome Ruth. Um, Ruth is, I've worked with Ruth for many, many years um, and initially as a student, um, then supporting her um, with her master's and her doctoral study and it is an honour, um, absolutely honour to work with this this treasure that we have. Um, I'm so lucky to be a colleague um, with her at the University of Auckland. So I'd like to welcome you, Ruth, and thank you for giving up your time and supporting our teachers to get a better understanding of the Hangaro curriculum because we are so, so lucky as a country to have this curriculum. And thank you for sharing your knowledge um, with us. So I'll turn it over to you, Ruth. Oh, kapoi. Tēnā koe whai, Kiri. That was a, that was a lovely introduction. Um, I hope um, I hope this uh, presentation will be uh, helpful to um, to everyone here. And I'd like to put it to everyone. Please do ask your questions as soon as they arise um, through the Q and A function, and we'll try and address them uh, as we go. Um, if I don't notice um, Q and A's coming in, um, the lovely Kerry will be giving me a helping hand. So um, I'd like to start um, with uh, Karakia. Now these are the opening words um, of the Hangaro curriculum, uh, also known as Te Iho Te Hangaro, uh, or the essence of Hangaro. Um, in the words of one of the curriculum developers, the guts and garters of what we do. Okay, and I've got the uh, official translation that was provided through Tiki Te Apurangi uh, on the right there. Uh, so, me karakia tato. Tikina atu i tua whakarere, i te ao kōhatu, ngā mōhiutanga o rātou mā, he kawe i a tato i roto i te ao tūroa. Kua takoto ke te whāriki i rarangahia e rato. Wānangahia, tuakina kia tau. Rangahaua kia maumahara. Manakohia kia whiwhi ai te mātou ranga Māori motuhake. Haumie, huie, tāikie. Uh, ka pai, so... Uh, you can immediately spot one of the um, um, one of the differences. Uh, I'm assuming, actually. So let me know through chat or Q and A if, if my assumption is incorrect. Um, that participants will be incredibly familiar with New Zealand curriculum, um, and maybe may have heard of um, Te Maro Tangu Aotearoa, right? Which is the curriculum framework that um, uh, Hangaro belongs into. Um, so with Hangaro, one of the immediate differences that you see is that it is not future facing. Um, you start um, by reclaiming and researching and then reframing um, traditions from um, tūpuna or ancestors. Okay, um, so Obviously, we've, we've sized them just so that I can show. I will be focusing on Te Maro Tango Aotearoa today, um, although I am happy to talk about any questions if you have specific questions about differences uh, between NZC and TMOA. And at the left there, uh, contact details. If you Google me, I'm pretty easy to get in touch with. Um, so um, please feel free. Okay, and actually, before I start on the Hangaro curriculum, um, who am I? Um, ko ngā puhi, ko ngā tipaka, ngā iwi. Um, I connect with um, ngā puhi in the North, the North Island. Um, and uh, uh, through my mum's side, I connect to Cornwall, Ireland and Scotland. Um, I'm the... I started as a Hangaro lecturer in 2015 with Te Puna Wānanga um, at the Faculty of Education at Auckland University um, through the uh, Hurahi Māori program, which is um, 
is something I'm very proud of and now um, have the honor of uh, working as program leader. So I get to um, uh, oversee uh, the um, program, uh, Huarahi Māori program. Um, so it was basically uh, working as a hangaro lecturer that started me um, noticing the kinds of questions that I may not have known as a uh, teacher because I didn't have time to think, to think of these questions. And it was only when I had students asking me um, that I realized, oh, wow, um, I'm not actually sure. So I may, um, I may talk a little bit about those kinds of things as well through this presentation. Um, if we have a look at the 2017 Hangaro curriculum, uh, we can spot again quite, quite um, visually and quite quickly uh, that there are um, uh, marked differences between the curricula, right, uh, between technology and uh, Hangaro. All right, so I'll just talk quickly through um, what you have there as you have a whāriki or a, um, or a mat, right? The whāriki is the metaphor that was used with the 1999 document. And so the whāriki represents the old, right? Um, the whāriki is wrapped around a moki or blue trumpeter fish, um, which is representative of local knowledge. Um, they are a highly significant fish to... Um, Te whānau kauwai tangohia, um, who are on the east coast, and um, they are representative of local knowledge uh, through Tuihana Puk, who was one of, um, who was the lead curriculum writer of Hangaru. Um, and so what you have there is visually you have the old wrapped in the local, which also represents, um, which also represents the new. Um, because there was a shift in terms of hangaro in 2008 um, towards trying to uh, emphasize that balance that we try and walk in the classroom uh, between the national and general knowledge um, that we're teaching and between the local place-based knowledge that is really really important um, at the school level that we're working in. Um, so if we then go to the uh, whenu or strands, there are two key strands for the Hangaro curriculum. Along the top of the, uh, of the kitu here, you can see Ngā Ahua Tango Te Hangaro. Um, now this is uh, uh, closest to nature of technology um, in the NZC. Uh, this is where you're thinking about people, you're thinking about uh, needs and opportunities, you're thinking about those resulting impacts, on the environment, you're thinking about the life of your hua hangaro. Um, what will we do? And you start planning this as a in hangaro classroom. What will we do with our hua hangaro when it reaches the end of its life? Um, will we be able to re reuse um, any of the materials? Will we be able to um, recycle the materials in any way? Um, or what will happen with those materials? Um, along the bottom of the kitu you can see Te Whakaharato Hangaro. Um, now this is your, um, your practices and your knowledge. Um, and so I think with, uh, with that uh, and um, Bond, uh, I can't remember her first name, this is the fault of referencing, uh, but Bond uh, did some work um, and she has discussed um, the fact that she's noticed the uh, uh, the difference here that in the uh, NZC you've got uh, two separate strands, one for your skills and one for your um, one for your practices. Mm. Am I giving them the right labels there, Kerry? One for your skills and one for your no um, practices, technological practice. Practice, yes. Yeah. Well, hey. Okay, let's carry on in an accurate vein. Um, so you have uh, those two strands uh, in the from the Maori curriculum designers' perspective. Uh, the desire was that both of these um, strands would be taught regardless of what the context was. 
And now our labeling is slightly different. So in the middle here on the kete, um, are ngā aho, which do translate to contexts. Okay, and so um, our contexts are, um, there are five contexts there. I'm going to break them down through the presentation. Um, but anything else to say? No, at the right, um, the key thing that I maybe have not been explicit about yet um, is the fact that um, uh, Whakahara Tau Hangaro, um contains the skills and knowledge um, because they're seen as being interdependent and inseparable. Okay. And I can see there aren't any questions yet, but again, do feel free to pop them pop them my way. Um, now, uh, yes, I know, this um, is actually one of the aho that was removed um, once uh, Hangaro Matihiko was introduced in 2017. Um, I have included it uh, partially because um, it is uh, quite a central aho uh, and the rationale for removing it was, um, was that it is meant to be embedded throughout the Hangaro curriculum. Um, I do feel that sometimes if things aren't explicit, um, then maybe that whole desire to embed can become lost a little bit. Um, so I'm starting here and saying Te Tuku Mō Hio Hio uh, was one of the um, aho up until 2017 at which stage um, it was actually um, uh, removed. Uh, the idea being that te iho te hangaro, um, contains the thinking there um, and that the, um, the content of that context would continue to be embedded throughout the hangaro curriculum. All right, so um, hangaro matihiko is the um, tainā, it's the pōtiki, the last born, um, or the baby of the hangaro curriculum, um, as it is with NZC, Digital Technologies. Um, it is uh, the most widely known, um, probably. It might be a bit debatable, but um, it is uh, quite widely known. Uh, so what I've done here is I've just summarised uh, the two uh, the two um, two strands that we have, um, starting with tangata me te roruhiko, um, then people and computers, um, and I've illustrated uh, that strand with using a whakatauki. So he iti tangata e tupu, he iti toki, he iti tonuihu. All right. Um, and for me, right, so this is a personal choice, these, these whakatauki on this screen. Um, the others that I will share came from curriculum support materials that were developed in 2008. But the idea with people and computers is that really it's, um, it's down to ethics again um, and the nature of our dynamics um, with with this tool how will we use it how will we choose to use it um, will we uh, will we continue con to consider the impact of the choices that we make through the coding um, through the um, you know, through the coding uh, process um, and uh, that idea is represented through the whakatoki in that uh, people do change but the tool um, will be what it is so we need to consider what it is um, when we're going through the process of coding. Um, down the bottom, we've got the Karo Ruruhiko, um, and that yeah does translate quite closely to the computational thinking. And I think uh, that's probably the material that's the most similar um, in that uh, computer science and the kind of concepts that are involved. Uh, you know, um, ngaha tipi algorithms, sequencing, um, all, all, all of those kinds of ideas um, at this point, right, seem to be quite universal. Um, and so uh, there with the computational thinking, 
uh, just trying to empower the teachers and the students in their thinking. Um, it's not the code that has the thought, right? It is the coder um, who, ha who has the, the thinking. And so we'll drive and shape um, what is coming out. Um, all right. And uh, to go up to the um, whole aho of Hangaro Matihiko, um, I think I've seen this whakatoki being, being used when uh, people are um, running conferences, um, presentations, wānanga, um, ko maui tinihanga, right? Um, and for me, that's a little bit of a link to the idea that hangaro um, uh, in the vocab of the East Coast is actually referring to being a, a bit cunning and a bit full of trickery um, more than um, actually uh, the technological processes that we uh, all know and love. Um, all right, so if we jump on, um, I will just keep jumping until questions come in. Um, right, um, Hangaro Koyora, I suppose the parallel or closest um, NZC Aho would be biotechnology. Um, although from a Māori perspective, things that you would cover um, would be um, ideas of kaitiakitanga, guardianship. Um, you would cover rongoa, and I think rongoa is um, both, both sides. You'd be covering ideas of forest regeneration, uh, marine reserves, um, te ahumuana, like working um, marine farming, um, hydroponics, um, ideas of rahui, um, where you have bands um, for conservation purposes. Um, so kind of th those kinds of ideas. And um, the whakatoki, um, I slipped there. Sorry, I will translate it for you guys. Natani ia hine ahuoni ka puta ko te iratata ki te whaiao ki te marama. So it's saying tāne, it, it is through tāne and the first woman, hine ahuoni, um, that um, the seed of mankind um, came to the world, to the world of light. Um, and uh, for me, that is representative of um, the whakapapa or uh, connections that we have um, to everything that is in the world. And the fact that people are, are really the younger sibling um, to pretty much all plant life um, or animal life. Um, we are uh, the younger sibling and so it is up to us to be um, helping to look after this planet um, not necessarily um, so that it will be handed down but so so that it is um, just still there uh, we live in a consumer technology and we're consuming ourselves to death let's try and um figure out ways around that. Um, ngā hanga ni ngā pū hanga manawa. Right, so it's your structures and mechanisms um, as a parallel right, um, with, uh, with some of your context for learning. Um, it could be making manu tuku tuku, uh, manu ote, kites. Uh, it could be making hinaki or eel traps. Um, other kinds of traps and snares. Um, it could be weaving um, puppets. Um, puppets is something um, that, uh, among many other things, um, uh, required reclamation of knowledge. And I think Aroha Yates Smith at Waikato University led a bit of that. Um, so there's some very, very interesting work that you, you can do with um, your tamariki um, in these kinds of uh, areas. Um, and the whakatoki that was chosen for the support material, love it. Uh, just talking about the uh, um, suitability of materials, right? We have that question that we ask ourselves when we're trying to solve a problem. Um, what shall we use? What do we have available? And then what's actually going to work with um, 
with the other materials that we have. Okay, I'll read it out. I know you can see it, but I'll read it out. E kore e piri te uku ki te rino, ka fitingia e te rā, ka ngahoro. Okay, um, our third context, um, it's, it's parallel, for want of a better word, in the NZC, um, or in the um, last, um, the 2007 NZC, I should say, um, is electronics and control technology, um, being te tāhiko me te hangarau hakatina. Right. Um, and there, I think the choice of um, Whakatauki is a little le less obvious, but um, maybe it will become more so when I share a, um, a story. Um, and this was shared, um, is still shared by uh, curriculum designers that were involved in the um, first Chocky Docky, um, sitting in a hui in, um, near the Waikato River and um, talking with Ngāniko Minhinik, um, who is a queer who ha um, has done a lot of work in mental health in that region um, and is connected um, with the Waikato River. Um, and she shared um, her understanding of hangaro, and she said that um, your perspective changes um, because of the world view um, that um, because of the Maori um, that you carry with you um, and she gave the example of the Waikato River and she said that you know you wouldn't as a kai hangaro Maori or a Maori technologist you wouldn't make the choice to um, be pouring hot water into your ancestor um, you would find another solution so our next context, our next aho is Hangaro Kai. Um, now this was the one Fakatoki that I didn't, I kind of enjoyed the idea that, um, you know, you want to eat of knowledge. Um, but I kind of felt, which is why I have the little note down below, uh, that possibly if you're thinking about the ideas within the food technology curriculum, um, and you're thinking about looking after guests, you're thinking about from food to plate, um, and um, all that that entails. Um, I might have chosen um, the whakatauki and the note. Ki te kore koe e whāngai te tangata, me pēhia te iwi e mōhiwai e whai mana ana koe. If you're not... Um, looking after guests, um, how will people know that you are a worthy person? Um, and just illustrating the importance of manaakitanga uh, from a from a Maori perspective. I mean, you know, it, it is important generally, um, um, but it is especially important um, if you think of the idea of manaakitanga. Um, Yes, so this, again, it's um, revisiting, looking at traditional, um, looking at traditional techniques, materials, um, ideas, um, um, through research, and then um, reframing, innovating, and, and moving from there. Um, all right, and so these... Um, uh, images that I've just shared um, and whakatauki uh, all come from um, curriculum resource material um, authored by Deanne Thomas all right that came out and was commissioned by the Ministry of Education uh, so similar to the NZC um, resource materials this came out uh, just after um, 2008 um, with the new curriculum okay um, now, in terms of this slide, um, this slide kind of comes from uh, my master's research and the process of sitting with um, 
curriculum designers and talking about um, their understandings of hangaro. Um, and so I really, I did want to share this because um, I, well, I find it very helpful for my practice. Um, so the hope is that you'll find it helpful for yours. Um, okay, and I, I've called it Mahaki, that's a, a pseudonym, Mahaki's Framework for Hangaro Practice. Now, um, when this curriculum designer was speaking with me, um, I uh, responded visually, um, and that's what you see at the left. So as she told me about um, Hangaro for her starting with the stars, um, stars represent whakapapa, beginnings, uh, they represent creativity, um, and for her they make her think of glitter, because her mum, well there was glitter all around the house when she was growing up, um, because her mum was highly creative and constantly making things, so um, that is the first part of um, the hangaro curriculum. Okay, keeping in mind um, that the head, the hands, and the purpose are interwoven and inseparable. Right, so you start from the stars, um, which represent the head, um, and then you move to the hands. And if you're moving to the hands, um, that makes um, Mahaki think of her grandfather. Uh, and her, it was her grandfather's incredible skills uh, and knowledge about ealing um, that resulted in him being able to feed not just their whānau and not just the extended hapū, um, but uh, not just the hapū, but the extended community. Um, and so she remembers, and behind the hand, what you see there is a, a, co a kota, um, a rack for um, drying eel skins, and there are eel skins hanging on the rack. Um, so we've gone from the head uh, to the hands um, and then underneath there is the pātiki, uh, the kōwhaiwhai pattern that you can see and now the pātiki is the flounder and that's used quite uh, commonly um, in parihauraki um, as a symbol of hospitality. All right, so that there represents the... Um, the stakeholders, the people for which you are creating a solution. And now um, I think uh, right from Chucky Doki, another one of the differences, um, if you remember in the Chucky Doki, there were contexts of practice, right, that they um, that they shared. So you had um, in NZC, oh, oh, this is testing my memory on a on a on a week uh, week afternoon. Um, started with self and then um, home, family, school. And on the um, uh, Māori Choki um, uh, it didn't start with me. It started with Fano, Kura. Um, and I think the um, there wasn't a move towards um, commercial organisations. Um, although I should make it clear that um, one of the curriculum designers I've spoken with uh, more recently has um, has said, no, there's uh, nothing against commercialization. I mean, it's a very important thing to be able to do that. Um, but just uh, in the Chucky Doki, um, it focused um, at marae level and then it focused at community levels. Um, and so the initial Chucky Doki um, uh, Hangaro um, didn't have um, didn't have the focus on self or the focus on um, uh, commercial uh, applications. Um, and so the Pātiki um, is really it's it's sharing that um, kind of that that tikanga as well when you're when you're making something you always make your first thing for someone else right and so that's something that I do try and practice with um, tamariki um, all the way through um, and um, at the five-year-old level it's the most easiest if you if, if they know it explicitly at the beginning and they're making a present for someone 
um, that's kind of the easiest way that I framed it. Um, all right, and I think the point, the third point at the bottom there um, about innovation beginning with reclamation and looking at traditions um, is something that I have raised um, earlier in the presentation. Um, so I might, um, I might just find out, Kerry, do you have any questions? Ah, great. Sorry, I was typing it for you. Um, I'm aware that there may be a couple of people who are unfamiliar with the term chocky docky. So you might just want to have a, a quick, a, in case somebody's on who's new and um, only familiar with more recent documents. The chocky docky um, is the first iteration of the um, Hangaro. Brilliant. See, I, I would have shared my scan, but <laughs> <laughs> that's not the appropriate thing to share. So thank you so much, Kerry. Yeah, there is the Chalky Docky in all its glory. Um, it was first released in 1995 um, for the NZC and 1999 for um, Te Marautango Aotearoa. Thank you. Sorry, I just thought the reason it was chosen was because it was it literally is a brown document every curriculum area has their own and it was brown and uh so it, it got the name chalky docky so that's i think it's a lovely term how could we support um and work with hangaro should we be working with it um and and just for people who are unsure um how can we know more um those sorts of things Okay, um, well, I'm going to um, tackle uh, the last bit, what should we do and how could we know more? Um, I mean, if you are interested, uh, sections of the um, sections of Te Marautango Aotearoa were translated. So um, uh, you would be able to access that. I'll just quickly uh, Google it. Um, and that's a that's a place to start. Um, here we go. And I'll put that link in the chat uh, to everyone. No, I can't do that. So um, I'll leave it to. It's there, Ruth. I okay. can reshare that to everyone for you, no problem. Thank you, Holly. Um, uh, and after after reading um, some of the words, then you may want to um, we'll talk to colleagues if you have colleagues um, or a Māori unit at your school. This was curriculum material that was developed for uh, the Chucky Doki of Hangaro, um, and it shares physical examples of classroom practice. Um, you've got um, building Ropo Fari. Um, at uh, Kura Kaupapa Māori in Palmerston North, you've got Ngā Taka Wairore, um, or um, games um, at another Kura Kaupapa Māori. Uh, sorry, the first one wasn't a Kura Kaupapa Māori, it's Te Kura Otākoro. Um, and then an example of hi muki. All right, the muki is the blue trumpeter fish. Um, and now what we really want to be doing is we need to be widening access to these materials. Um, when I was doing my master's, I tried to track down a copy. Um, and even though I'm, I'm closely involved with schools that <laughs> were case studies, uh, they didn't have a copy either anymore. Um, and so I mean, my, my question is, well, how, uh, how easy is it to teach something when we can't access the resources that were made to support the materials? All right, so you have going out um, to source materials using community expertise. Um, and I share the original marotanga, what was the structure, what did it look like? Um, you have the um, finished product. Um, you have the process all along the way and a lot of talk about what's happening and how um, with the uh, majority of Mātauranga Māori context, you've got mixed levels. So 
um, this was pretty much a year zero through six um, group collaborative project. Then right, right from this, um, I didn't realize until I was speaking with curriculum designers um, that this was a gift from um, the curriculum writers of Te Marotungo Aotearoa to the NZC team um, in the 2007-2008 um, iterations. For the, for the Te Marotungo Aotearoa process, about a year was spent on this front piece, which is the, uh, you know, again, something else I didn't understand as a teacher. I didn't realise that was the new um, Anga Ultimato Tuna, the new New Zealand curriculum framework, um, replacing um, you know, what had come out in 1993. Um, so I was quite excited once I heard that. Uh, but the um, this page, as an example, just has so much meaning to it. Um, and here we have represented um, our ancestors, um, those like Hirini Melbourne, um, Apira Nangata, uh, Sir James Hienari, um, who worked tirelessly um, for um, our Tamariki Mokupuna to be able to have access to the education that they have today. Um, and so um, this page here is a reminder that our Tamariki don't stand alone. Um, they bring with them wherever they go, they bring um, you know, we, we stand with our ancestors and, and we stand because of our ancestors. All right. Um, so, I mean, this is an example from 2006. So at that point, it was actually um, Tukumo Hyo Hyo or information transfer. And we ran a little online radio station. Um, uh, part of it was a uh, composition of original songs, but um, also learning um, and sharing um, traditional songs and songs of mana whenua or songs that connect to that area. Um, I think I wrote a little story about this for the tech, um, the tech corner on TKI. Um, and so this was an intermediate class and we were building to a, a leadership camp um, and the river at the camp we were at was reputedly very good for ailing. Um, so we uh, researched and innovated on the design of hinaki um, and we made sure that um, these were actually also used as part of a we did installations for the art exhibition that year it was fabulous um, here we have um, some things for um, matariki and so uh, with Matariki that year, it was a strong science tech focus. You can see um, cheese at the left, um, at the right. It's um, a version of a fruit roll up. It was quite delicious. It looks very interesting though. Um, but we're looking at different ways of preserving kai, uh, te roki roki kai, um, and a wide range, both um, Maori traditional um, methods and um, Western traditional methods, um, jarring, pickling. Um, and then we shared um, the fruits of our labours at the um, Fano presentation. Here are a couple of examples of um, Hangaro Kuiora. At the right, you can see a comfrey slash koakoa um, balm that has been strained through muslin. And at the left, you can see um, a science focus uh, research into. Um, uh, native trees and the production of um, uh, essential oils, uh, te mahi hinu kākara. Um, and so uh, the uh, perfumes were actually quite, quite beautiful uh, that came out of that. Um, mahi manu tuku tuku, um, this was five to seven year olds, and you can tell that the manu tuku tuku here hanging on the wall had had a very hard life by the time they got to the wall. Um, but they all flew. Some of them did lose some of their materials as they were flying, but they all flew. Um, and so this would be Nga Hanga Minga Pū Hanga Manawa, um, Structures and Mechanisms. Right, so I'll stop the uh, timed, uh, the timed quiz, um, quiz night there. Um, I kept the timing on. 
uh, because that would make it much easier for me not to go over time on a uh, Wednesday evening. We want to let you get to your evening and enjoy it. Kia ora, Ruth. Thank you so much. Um, you're always so informative and inspirational. And as I said earlier, so generous with your knowledge. Um, you always put complex ideas in such a simplistic way um, and make everything easily understood. So without um, demeaning the integrity of the, the content of the knowledge itself. So thank you so much for. Um, for giving up your time for us in the preparation for today, just sharing your knowledge. We really, really appreciate it. So thank you. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs>